A paper display is a great technology due to its capability to maintain its frame even when it's not powered. So can you imagine how awesome it would be to use it in an IoT project with ESP32 microcontroller? Today in this video, I will be sharing with you guys KLIDF library to let ESP32 drive 7.5 inch A paper display and connect to KLES server to obtain custom frame data and show useful information like weather or even Bitcoin price chart and more. We have got a lot to show today, so without any further ado, let's put the show on the road. Turn your dream project into reality with PCBWay. I've personally used their services to produce my own prototype for future IoT projects. Ordering your own PCB has never been easier before with a lot of features. They also have open source community, so there are many projects to have a look at. Find the link in the description. All right, so here's the hardware that we are going to deal with in this tutorial. Uh, of course, here we have a 7.5 inch A paper display, 800, uh, 480 pixel uh, dimension. Uh, and of course, here we have the interfacing board, uh, T5 uh, 2.4 version. Uh, from uh, Lilygo. Uh, the board has ESP32 microcontroller uh, that's interfacing the display over SPI uh, using this connector. Also, we can see on the board, uh, here we see the flash, we see uh, a PS RAM to provide more RAM so we can have larger buffer to interface the display. We can also see SD card socket and here we have uh, the battery connector. Here we have a battery charging circuitry uh, and here we have uh, USB and USB TTL integrated circuit in order to program the MCU. And in addition to that, we can see here uh, a speaker is also connected, so we can make use of that. But in this tutorial, we are going to ignore that part because uh, the EA paper display is a quite a nice topic to focus on. And here we have also uh, some GPIOs uh, connected to these headers. So the main feature of a paper display, it's also called the A ink display, uh, is that when the MCU sends the frame data uh, to the display, the display will uh, show that frame and it will contain it even when the display is not powered. So this is very good application where uh, the uh, power consumption is an issue and the system is powered by a battery. So in order to power my system, here I will be using uh, 18650 uh, uh, battery that has a voltage between 4.1 and 3.7. So let me connect it to my board and see how the MCU will uh, refresh the display. So here I have it connected. Now the MCU is configured to connect over Wi-Fi and get the uh, frame data from there. So now, as you can see, the uh, display is uh, getting refreshed. So now using the KLES server, uh, I've changed the uh, display, so now let me reset. So here I have a reset button on the back of the board. It's also programmed to uh, refresh the display every one hour. So uh, I'm actually resetting it, so we don't wait uh, for that. So yeah, as you can see, uh, here we have got weather data. Of course, the weather data is obtained from Open Weather API. So now you can see the weather for uh, tomorrow. Uh, it will be quite hot. As you can see, it will reach uh, 34 uh, degrees. So now let me use the Bitcoin price API. I will modify it from the uh, KLES server. And now after adjusting that, we will reset again from the button at the back. Okay, so right now uh, the ESP32 is getting the uh, data uh, from uh, the KL server that's going to be printed on the screen right now as you can see so yes right now we have the um, bitcoin uh, versus usdt chart so as you can see right now the bitcoin price is something close to uh, thirty thousand five hundred dollars and here we can see the representation of uh, the candles versus the uh, date of course the uh, bitcoin price uh, will be changed by the release of this tutorial uh, we'll discuss uh, the KL server uh, features 
uh, after talking about the uh, firmware running on the ESP32. But first, let me show you the uh, stand that I've printed with my 3D printer. I will be showing the STL file of this stand uh, on my GitHub repository, so you can download it from there and use it for your project. All right, so here's the firmware that's running on the ESP32. Uh, this firmware is actually dedicated uh, to be connected uh, over HTTP uh, to the KLES server. Uh, and uh, get the uh, rendered uh, frame data from there and print them uh, over SPI uh, to the AAP per display. So actually most of the hard work uh, and all credit is to Mr. Uh, Martin Fasani, uh, the creator of this library. What I've actually done is that I've added the uh, AAPaper module that I'm using in this tutorial. And the AAPaper module that I'm using is from DKE and here's the uh, specific uh, module number. So it's a 7.5 inch, uh, 800, 480 uh, pixel uh, screen. Uh, and it has only one bit uh, color depth. So we can only display uh, black and white colors. So uh, here's the uh, header file and the uh, source file. So the library is written in C++ uh, programming language. So let's talk in general. So in the main layer, we are actually supposed to select the uh, a paper module that we are using. So in my case, I'm using uh, the one uh, from DKE and then modify the class of the uh, a paper module that we are using. So in our case, we are using this module. OK, so now the firmware is adjusted to uh, interface this specific display. But of course, depending on the hardware that you are using, you need to modify uh, the pins. And you can, of course, do that from the menu config uh, of the ESP32. So if we head uh, to this part. OK, so if we head to the directory where uh, this project is located, uh, we need to access the uh, menu config. Of course, I'm using uh, ESP IDF. Of course, the KL library uh, is also compatible with Arduino, but uh, the processor there is uh, a bit different. So yes, here we need to uh, set the hardware that we are using. Yes, so from there uh, we can modify uh, the pins depending on the hardware that we are using. So we can set here the SPI, MOSI, clock, uh, chip select, uh, data and command pin, a paper reset pin and a paper busy pin. And this will uh, do the job. And of course, in the uh, Kale configuration, uh, you can adjust the Wi-Fi uh, credential the SSID and the uh, password. And from there, you need to add the link to the KLES server. So I don't have touch panel to configure. And from there, we are good to go. OK, so now let's get back uh, to the main, uh, which is actually responsible for handling all the uh, data exchange between uh, the KLES server uh, over uh, HTTP and of course the ESP32 that we have. So in this layer, as we can see, all the HTTP related events uh, are handled. And here we can see in the received HTTP data event, the received data is nothing but a bitmap and it's actually stored uh, in the related structure. And after that, this layer will talk with the layer that's related to the uh, a paper display that we have added which is actually responsible for dealing uh, with the SPI layer and transferring all the data and the commands to the uh, APaper module uh, that we have. So if we have a quick look at the uh, supported commands uh, in this layer, here we see the SPI initialization, uh, fill screen, uh, wake up. Here we can see a sequence of data and commands are sent uh, to the APaper display. Here we see the uh, display update, which is going to send the uh, frame data uh, directly to the display using the uh, Adafruit uh, library, as we said. And so in the wait busy, uh, the firmware is going to uh, check the uh, busy pin uh, of the display. And according to that, the next uh, command will be executed. And this is the uh, display sleep. In order to lower the uh, power consumption of the display, here we see the uh, window update. Here we see the sleep uh, command, uh, wait, uh, busy, frame rota rotation, and draw pixel. Uh, in more details. So after talking about this part, now let's jump into uh, Kel ES server and see how things are done there so we can control our display remotely. All right, so here's the Kel ES server that my ESP32 is connected to. Uh, so after creating an account uh, on this server, you will have uh, this interface. So the most important segments uh, in this uh, interface is the content and the screen. So we are going to create content and then we can uh, display them uh, on the screen. So here I have uh, image gallery. 
uh, crypto chart uh, and the open weather we have actually seen all of them at the beginning of the tutorial of course in order to be able to the open weather api you need to create uh, first your uh, api key and then you can use it here for the sake of demonstration let's uh, go with this uh, image gallery let me delete uh, this one that I'm using right now and now I will upload the one of the images I'll upload this one uh, and then uh, save content and then, then I have it so uh, I have maximum of 10 megabytes uh, of uh, pictures in order to load so the pictures will be refreshed every uh, one hour so every one hour the display will uh, show different picture if you go with this content so let's go now go to the screen and now uh, here I've uh, configured my screen to have uh, two segments let me show you in the uh, screen content so now I'm using two contents actually that I've uh, configured over here uh, I have the uh, picture test which is the uh, image gallery and the uh, open weather API so here I will show the weather uh, in Istanbul uh, and the row is set to 9 the maximum value over here so the open weather API will have nine rows in order to print uh, the weather data. So having both uh, the picture uh, and the open weather API, let's render the display. So this is the frame that's going to appear on the uh, screen. And here's how the frame appears on the uh, a paper display. Of course, you will be able to change the template uh, in the configuration uh, segment over here. So you can uh, have one two or three segments uh, depending on the design yeah, that you want to display on your uh, a paper screen this brings me to the end of this video of course i will be sharing all the stuff that you have seen in this tutorial on my github repository so if you have learned something new please give this video a thumbs up share it among your friends and tell them about useful electronics stay tuned for the upcoming tutorials and bye bye